So I am here today to do my wrap up for the month of July, which is crazy. We're over halfway through the year. Insane. But I'm going to be filming this on the same day that I filmed my Friday reads. So I don't know if I finished these books yet, but I mentioned them in my Friday reads. So I'm just going to literally show you the title and then I'm going to move on to all the ones that I have actually finished. So first one I'm currently reading is Lisa McEnany's The Glorious Heresies. The next one I'm currently reading is Nevernight by Jay Kristoff, and the final one that I'm currently reading is The Last Kingdom by Bernard Cornwell, so I have to film this video now. Hopefully I'll have finished them by the time you see this, we'll see. Moving on to all of the books that I did actually finish in the month of July, I'm going to go from lowest rating to highest rating, and I'm going to include my graphic novels in this month's one because I don't have too many of them this month, but I do have a lot of books, so let's whiz through this. The first one I have to show you guys is Replica by Lauren Oliver. I did this as a buddy read, I just was not impressed with it. It just wasn't a book for me, I was the wrong target audience, it was very predictable. 1.5 out of 5 stars for this one, sadly. The next one I picked up was The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald. I did this as the Gatsby Gab read-along was happening on Chelsea's channel and I joined in with that. It's a super short book, didn't take long to read. I gave it a 2 out of 5 stars, it was okay but it wasn't really anything more than that for me, unfortunately. The next one I read was a non-fiction book. This is Unfortunate English, The Gloomy Truth Behind the Words You Use, and it's by Bill Brohor. And unfortunately, this just got a little bit repetitive and a little bit dull as I went further through. At first, it was very interesting, but it wasn't great overall. Two out of five stars for that one, sadly. The next one I picked up was Poison City by Paul Crilly. This one is an urban crime fantasy and it's definitely something that I enjoyed even though it's not a genre I read so much. So for that reason I gave it a 2.5. It was likeable, it was very interesting, but it wasn't a genre I would normally pick up and normally enjoy. So for what it was, I enjoyed it. It's not my personal taste though. 2.5, decent read. The next one I read was Smoke by Dan Valletta, and this was another book where I loved the idea. I thought the idea was fantastic, but it just didn't come to fruition for me in this book. It is the first one in the series, so maybe later on in the series it will, but for the moment I gave this a 2.5 because again, it just didn't quite reach that three star mark for me. It was super interesting. I do think I'll carry on with this series, even though I gave it a 2.5, so maybe one to check out. Don't let my rating put you off because I think it is very interesting and definitely has merit even though it feels like the first book in a series and it definitely will need more building on it in the next few books so we'll see we'll see the next one i read was gemina by amy kaufman and jay christoph this is the second book in the illuminae series or the illuminae files i believe it's called i really enjoyed this but i didn't enjoy it quite as much as illuminae i gave it a three out of five stars it's definitely likable definitely fast paced and fun still has the document format inside which is cool but it just wasn't as likeable as Illuminae for me because the characters are different and I much preferred the first book and the characters in the first book. However, I will be picking up book three in this series because I think book three is going to be pretty cool, judging on what happens in this book in the first. So three stars for that. The next book I read was The Loney, which is by Andrew Michael Hurley. This one is more of a literary horror kind of gothic -y story. It's definitely not what I normally read but I actually listened to this on audiobook and I really really enjoyed it. I think the narrator was really good and I definitely was getting the sort of tense vibes that this book is aiming to get across. It also reminded me a lot of Of Mice and Men which is kind of interesting. So if any of that appeals to you, like a gothic suspenseful read rooted a lot in a religious village, very interesting kind of ideas, then three out of five stars is what I gave this. I definitely liked it. Um, I would have liked it to have a little bit more of a tense atmosphere at the end, but overall I think it was very good, so I gave it three stars. The next book I read was The Flames of Shaddam Core, which I read on my Kindle, and this one I gave it 3.5 out of 5 stars. It was the final one in the series, and I was very happy to complete it. It was a very complicated series, but one I did enjoy overall, so 3.5 stars for the series as a whole and this book in it. 
the next book I read is The Grace Keepers by Kirsty Logan. This one is one I've been meaning to read for quite a long time and I'm very happy I finally got to it. I did this as a buddy read with Will and I definitely enjoyed this. I think it was a very likeable, easy read. I do think that it could have had a lot more development but I think some of the ideas in this were fantastically done. Massively improved my liking of Kirsty Logan seeing as the only other thing I'd read by her before this was a short story collection that I hated. This is much better than that and I gave this a 3.5 out of 5 stars as well. The next book I read, I read with Lauren and with Eleanor, so I'll link their channels below. This is Sleeping Giants and it's by Sylvain Newville. It's actually a really interesting book. This one definitely I was debating between a 3.5 and a 4 stars for quite a long time. It's told mostly in interview format which makes it a really quick read but I definitely enjoyed this and it is the first one in the series so I'll certainly be carrying on with this series. It was just really imaginative and exciting and I think I like this more than a lot of other people did but I really really did find this quite fascinating so in the end I gave it a 3.5 because I think the series has potential to grow in the next book but I will be picking up the next book to find out. The next book I read was A Symphony of Echoes which is the second book in the St Mary's series by Jodie Taylor. I've been really enjoying these, listening to them on audio is fantastically fun and I've been reading them on my Kindle as well and this is the second book in the series. It's just a really laugh out loud amusing series and I gave it a 3.5 out of 5 stars. It's about time travel and adventures through history. It's great. The next book I read was the pick of the month for the Magical Space Pussycats podcast which we now have two episodes up and we'll soon have a third so definitely keep your eye on that channel. I will link it below as always and that was Sinners by Pat Cadigan. It was my first foray into cyberpunk and I finished this only a day or so ago and it was mind bending. Very very mind bending really creative but very weird, very crazy, filled with crazy stuff and I really enjoyed it but it was so weird so I gave it a 3.5 in the end because I couldn't quite say that I fully understood everything but what I did understand I really enjoyed so it'll be interesting to talk about that. We're going to be doing a full discussion of that one in our next podcast episode 3 so definitely look out for that if you've read it or if you just want to know a bit more about it if you're not planning to read it and you don't mind spoilers come over and listen to episode 3 when that is up because we will be going into detail there so 3.5 for that one. The next one I read is the first one in the St Mary series called Just One Damn Thing After Another which is really what attracted me to the series. Elizabeth was mentioning this recently that she read it and loved it so I naturally had to pick it up and give it a go and I really really loved it. I think if you like A Natural History of Dragons or if you like Gail Carragher then you'll probably enjoy this. I wouldn't say that this is quite the same calibre, I'd say it's slightly more jokey and slightly more batty and fun in places but I do think that it's just a really amusing series. So if you do like that and you want to read a kind of time travel with awesome female lead character and just a lot of fun craziness, this is definitely one to check out. I gave the first one four out of five stars. Definitely a series I'll be continuing on with. The next one I picked up and read was Emperor of the Eight Islands. This is by Leanne Hearn and I read this one with Eleanor and with Tracy and I definitely got through this the quickest and enjoyed it. Um, it's an oriental inspired book so there's a lot of Japanese influence in this story and it's told in two parts so there are two different stories in this but they link together. It's part one and part two in this edition. I really enjoyed this. I'm definitely eager to find out what happens in the next book and I don't know when it comes out because there's no release date for some reason. So if anyone knows when the next one comes out let me know. But until then I will be waiting quite patiently for it because I really really enjoyed this and I'm definitely intrigued. If you want a new YA series with oriental influence this is maybe one to check out. It has a lot of magic, a lot of cool elements and I gave it a 4 out of 5 stars overall. The next one I read was The Countenance Divine which is by Michael Hughes. This one is the one with the angel on the cover and I really enjoyed this. It is kind of what I would call a speculative literary historical fiction. It kind of bridges all of those gaps. It's kind of a bit of everything and this is set in four different timelines. You follow 1999, 1888, 1777 and 1666 and you follow different characters from each one and they all intersect in the end. It was really beautifully written and very interesting and I really enjoyed it and it definitely made me think so I gave it four out of five stars and I have done a review of that in my new exciting releases video so if you haven't seen that I'll link it below. The next one I read was another non-fiction one. This is The Geek Feminist Revolution by Cameron Hurley and this is a 
collection of essays that she has written and blog posts that she has written all about various different topics to do with being a feminist, being a geek and all sorts of other SFF related stuff. So if you're interested at all in Cameron Hurley as a person or if you're interested in feminism or if you're interested in geek culture, I would hugely recommend this. I really, really enjoyed her writing non-fiction stuff. It was fantastic and I really loved so many of the essays within this. I gave it a four out of five stars overall. The next one I picked up is The Sparrow which is by Mary Doria Russell and this one I read with Mercedes and Jackie and, and I definitely enjoyed this one I have to say. I went into this not really knowing much about it and I think that's a good way to go into it. It's a science fiction but it's a very literary science fiction. It focuses a lot on the character base and it focuses a lot on religion and philosophical debates surrounding religion. So if that's not for you, maybe you won't like this. It is a very slow build. It definitely takes time to get into the story and get into the action but once it does I really enjoyed it and I definitely enjoyed all the philosophy that was surrounding the religion and all the discussion that was going on. So I gave this a four out of five stars over Overall, I believe there's a sequel so I might pick that up at some point as well. I've heard good things about the sequel too. Hopefully I will like that whenever I get around to picking it up. The next one I read was a super super fun one. This one is called Hope and Red and it's by John Scovron. It was fairly recently released and I just really had a great time reading this. It was so so fun. I definitely think that this is a series that you'll enjoy if you've read things like um, the Riaria books by Michael J. Sullivan, or if you've read Scott Lynch's books, The Gentleman Bastards, Lies of Locke Lamora, any of those sort of sword and sorcery type books, I think you'll like this one. Also, if you like pirates, you probably like this. It's definitely based a lot on the sea, and it was just a really, really fun romp around kind of story that was super fast paced, but very, very fun. I will definitely be carrying on with this series, and I gave this one a four out of five stars. The next one I read was Renegade's Magic by Robin Hobb. This one is the final one in the Soldier Sun series so I've now finished that one up. I loved it, it was just great and of course I always enjoy Robin Hobb. I don't want to say too much about it because it is the third one but I will be doing a full series review of all three in the series, non-spoiler, so check that out when it goes up because I definitely have a lot of thoughts on this and I definitely want more people to read it because I don't think enough people on booktube have. And I gave this one a 4.5 out of 5 stars, definitely really really great series. The final book of the month and in fact the only book that I gave 5 out of 5 stars to this month which is quite rare for me because usually I have a few 5 star books is Among Others by Jo Walton and I just fell in love with this. It's the story of a young girl whose mother is a witch and she runs away from her mother because she knows that her mother is trying to do dark horrible things. So she runs away and she actually gets sent to England, go to a boarding school because she doesn't really know her dad, she's estranged from him, he doesn't really look after her too much so he just sends her to a boarding school. And she, the main character, is an avid reader of science fiction and fantasy so there are tons and tons of scatterings of references of science fiction and fantasy books from like the 70s to the 90s sort of era and I just think this is a fantastic fantastic book it was beautiful it was quite slow quite calm quite character driven told in diary entries and it's just a beautiful story about fairies about magic about romance, about love, about friendship, about pretty much everything that I really enjoy. So it was a slow one to get into but once I did I was absolutely captivated and I gave this a 5 out of 5 stars overall. I'm quickly going to whiz through all the graphic things as well because I haven't got too many so let's start them. First thing I tried to read and this is The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen Volume 1 by Alan Moore and various others. I really didn't like this, I thought it was absolute rubbish so I will not be carrying on with this series and I will be getting rid of this one. To be honest it was just really racist, really was not my sort of book. Probably it's just dated like that or intended like that but it just didn't come across very well to me as a modern reader so I didn't like this one. The next ones I read are the Fantasy Sports Volume 1 and Volume 2. I definitely didn't think I would like this I must say but I really really did. It was a super fun series about this young boy and his friend who get into all sorts of adventures involving sport in crazy different fantastical landscapes so definitely an unusual kind of series but really one that I enjoyed a lot and 
certainly a series that I think a lot of kids would really, really like. The artwork within looks like this. It's very, very bold. It's very bright. It's very exciting. So if you like that, you'll probably enjoy these. Particularly, I think these would be pretty good for kids, as I said. So I gave both of these a 3.5 out of 5 stars overall. The next one I read was Amulet Volume 3. This is The Cloud Searchers, and it's by Kazu Kabushi. I really enjoy this series. It's beautifully illustrated throughout, as you can probably see see the colour tones, the way that it's done, the expressions, it's all just really really cute and fun and beautiful all at once and some of the scenes, landscapes and things like this are just truly truly breathtaking. So besides the absolutely beautiful artwork, the story is really really fun, it's definitely age appropriate for kids, certainly a series that I would recommend. It's very adventure, action packed, it's about this other world these children fall into and they end up trying to do a big mission there. Very adventure driven and I gave this a 3.5 out of 5 stars as well. The next one I have to show you guys is White Sand by Brandon Sanderson and this is put together by Brick Hoskin and Julius Gopez and this is an adaptation of one of Sanderson's unpublished books which is called White Sand. Um, it's the first one in a series so I couldn't really tell you how the book is shaping up but I think what I read I definitely enjoyed and what I saw in the artwork let it down. I don't love the artwork of this series, I definitely think the artwork was the biggest detractor. It's okay, but it's really intensely like line squiggly drawingness, and I don't I don't really like that. Um, the expressions on the faces as well are quite brutal I must say, which I think is the point, but um, it wasn't my favourite style, let's put it that way. So. Besides the artwork not being my absolute favourite, the story I do think is really entertaining and very interesting so far. I am looking forward to carrying on with this series, I will be picking up the next one. I also gave this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. The next one I read was Saga Volume 6 by Fiona Staples and Brian K. Vaughan. I always enjoy Saga, it's such a fun series, and this one was no exception. I gave it a 4 out of 5 stars. The artwork within is always beautiful because Fiona Staples is amazing at what she does. As you can see, it's just really, really stunning and very character driven. Lots of interesting stuff developed in this one, and I do feel like we got the story a bit more on track. We had a skip forward in time, so overall, a very enjoyable installment in the series. Four out of five stars. The final graphic thing that I read this month was Natural World. This is by Mike Jolly and Amanda Wood and it's illustrated by Owen Davy. This is a scientific or nature based book with information inside in various fact form. It's hugely packed with information. There is so much in here. It's crammed with so many good illustrations from Owen Davy. It is a great book that I would 100% recommend giving to kids or giving to anyone who likes nature or the natural world like animals, plants, any of those sorts of things. It's all kind of jam-packed in here. I learned quite a few things from this even though I wasn't expecting to so that was really good as well and I ended up giving this a 4.5 out of 5 stars so that was that one. So that is everything I read in the month of July. I think you'll all agree it was quite a lot of books. Um, quite a lot of interesting books, quite a lot of middle of the road books. So some bad, some good, a bit of a good range. Let me know down below if you've read any of the ones that I mentioned or if there are any that you read this month that you were either really impressed by or that you really were disappointed by. I'd love to know those down in the comments below. Thank you all so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye! Thank you for watching my video today. Go pick up a book, then come back and chat with me again.